Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Green and Muller Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Alongside myself and my co-host, Sam Muller, we are joined by one of the main attractions of the Football Ramble podcast is, and a massive Newcastle United fan as well, is Pete Donaldson. Pete, welcome to the Green and Muller Show. Yeah, I, I like Newcastle more than I like football. Uh, and 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 they even they and they even they try to t- test my patience. To be quite frank, uh, I'd like to apologise for being squished up. I don't know what's happened with my camera, but I look like uh, I'm in like a 1980s kind of futuristic, like on, on like a massive screen in like a, a show where everybody has to kill each other. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're sponsored so- by Spider VPN today. Hello. <laughs> oh, they will love that. Spider VPN. Pretend you're somewhere else. Have they used that tagline? They should do. I don't know, but we're going to clip that bit up. Yeah, 100%. Oh, don't you? <laughs> A big thanks to our sponsor, Spider VPN, for that as well. <laughs> I just like um, this Sam, I've never been on. I've never been on like a Zoom call where there's a ticker at the bottom of the screen. It's very exciting. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. steam yard at its finest, isn't it, Sam? Got it all. Got it all. Love no, it. no Love expense spared. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, you and Pete have been communicating for uh, not well, a couple, is it a couple of days. A day, a week now? Two, a day. two days. Wow. Please come on. Yes, sorted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 yeah, I think you were overestimating my workload. <laughs> well, you know, it's, you I, never know. Because I, you, I, you think it, sometimes you message people and you think, oh, they'll definitely come on. What have they got to do? And then you don't <laughs> hear off them. And then I thought, well, because the ramble, you do it pretty much every day, don't you? We do, yeah. It's, it's Monday, Friday. Then we've got a couple of other channels as well. We've got a show called Melissa Reddy, uh, Between the Lines, uh, with Melissa Reddy, the, uh, the, the journalist. And, uh, yeah, it, it's... Very, very busy. The uh, producer, we've now got a couple of producers on board, which is really helpful. Guy called Finn, guy, guy called uh, Charlie, and they um, dot the I's and, and, and cross the T's uh, because, to be quite frank, I can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pete, where did it all start for you in a, as a young lad from Hartlepool? Um, why did you want to get in this sort of um, industry? Uh, get into the, the, the industry as in doing podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, I was I was working for like local government until I was about 26, 27. So I started radio quite late on. Um, so I, I started um, doing work experience with uh, 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 daughter of the northeast, uh, Lauren Laverne, on, on the XFM Breakfast Show. Um, did that for, for a couple of years and then um, started with another. There I am. <laughs> started with another. Uh, that was for the photo shoot for the last tour, I think. That uh, that jacket absolutely stank. Um, but yeah, it started, started doing a bit of stuff with uh, Laura Verne and Alex Zane. And uh, yeah, just got my own show on Overnight on XFM. Moved to Absolute Radio. Uh, but about sort of four years into my, um, I'm going to say broadcasting career, uh, I had access to studios and Luke Moore, who does the podcast with me, he was working upstairs at uh, Capital Radio and he... Um, and he just invited me down. I mean, mainly to, to to produce. I had access to studios. That that that's the only reason why I'm involved. To be honest, I had access to a studio. They needed a studio cheap, uh, and yeah, it, it just went from there really. So I've been kind of. Um, I started off as like pr- like producing it. I've always been quite technically minded. So usually, if there's a problem with uh, some wires, mics, whatever, uh, we usually uh, it, it, people usually sort of turn to me, and I've got to fix it, even though I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not trained in it. <laughs> I've just been doing it for a long time. <laughs> Was it um, always the plan to kind of dive straight into to podcasting and where your interests mainly lay, or do you still have that passion? Do you kind of miss Absolute Radio, and or is it now a relief you don't have to intersperse what you say with traffic and travel and the Jerry Cinnamon track? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, Jerry Cinnamon is shite, isn't he? I mean, I want something I could say on Absolute Radio, but it is insipid. The the most. Oh God! I, yeah, look, I liked a lot of the music we played at Absolute Radio. Uh, I'm a big fan of of everyone who works there. Um, there are some fantastic shows on there. Jerry Cinnamon, I, I, I've, I've left behind Jerry Cinnamon. I'm quite pleased I've left behind Jerry Cinnamon. <laughs> I find, I think, Oasis left. And it left this massive power vacuum, which meant bands like Kasabian were able to sort of call themselves the biggest rock and roll band in the UK. Uh, and then th- uh, they disappeared for obvious fucking reasons. And excuse my language. Uh, and he uh, and, and obviously people like Jerry Cinnamon uh, think they, 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 they could do that and, and get to number one. Do that and get to number I'm one. A- with, with Jerry Cinnamon, I think if you've heard one song, you've pretty much heard them all. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, though. 
lovely fella. I've interviewed him a couple of times. Absolutely <laughs> lovely fella. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't like his music that much. But yeah, it, it's um, it's I I sort of made the made the decision about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, to sort of just concentrate on the company Stakano full time because. To be quite frank, it needed it even pre <laughs> pre uh, lockdown, pre COVID, all that stuff. Um, it needed the attention, and um, yeah, it, it was just it was getting to a point where I remember sort of going. We did like a, a few uh, football ramble um, shows around the country. We did a massive tour. Did some in America and, and Canada as well. Um, and I was having like really really good time. But then you know at, at I think after the first show in Hackney, it was like uh, a quarter to ten. We come off stage, and when everyone else has gone to the pub and having a good time, and you know you know, winding down after a really successful first show, uh, curtain raiser, um, I was having to run back into town to do, to play Jerry Cinnamon. Um, <laughs> 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 from 10 o'clock. So like, uh, and, I, and it was just getting to the point where something had to give and it did give. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, it, I think it, it does take a period of adjustment. I don't know what next year is going to look like. I don't know what this year is going to look like, but um, last year was obviously my first year where I didn't have a radio show to do. Um, and obviously, the world's a very different to what it was in 2019. So I don't really know what a normal day should look like because there's always something to, some fire to fight somewhere. That's the element of surprise though, isn't it? When you have such a organized life maybe, and then obviously something like a pandemic happens and then, you know, we don't know what's happening next week, Never mind, you know, next year, but um, yeah. what did you learn? The, what, did, what did you, what did you learn most about yourself? <laughs> What did I, what did I want, sorry? Well, just what did you learn most about yourself during that time? Because we've, we've spoken to a lot of people from, since the pandemic and they've kind of come through the, the, other, the, other, the other, other end of the tunnel rather and they've learned so much more about themselves. What would you say you've learned so much about yourself and like, in your working life maybe? Um, I, I think I, I, I appreciate human contact. I think I was living in um, <laughs> Soho um, for about five, six months uh, last year um, and it was like... You know, there, there must be so many sort of zombie film directors coming out and filming B-roll uh, in those months because everything was boarded up, everything was closed, everything. It, it was it was before people figured out what they could do around the rules. Do you know what I mean? So companies were just boarded up, boarded everything up, and 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 I would just take a walk every day around Soho, around like towards sort of Westminster, towards um, the House of Parliament, towards all all, all those places, and 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 it was pretty bloody miserable to be honest even though the weather was quite nice it was pretty bloody miserable so <laughs> i um i'm, I'm now uh, shacked up with my partner and it's so much better <laughs> like it's so much better i've got a dog in the house or a couple of dogs and and, and uh i'm just having a, a really good time we're, we're, i'm currently trying to move house to actually buy my first, again I'm, I'm trying to learn to drive at 40 i'm trying to buy a house at 40 um and those two things are it, it, impossible turns out <laughs> impossible <laughs> they, 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 people don't want you to do them it's a nightmare it's horrible but uh yeah it, it, my life i feel like at 40 my life is coming together for some reason <laughs> see there's hope for you yet johnny yeah mm. i think so it must be <laughs> No, I mean, on on the plus side of a pandemic, it doesn't half make booking people a hell of a lot easier, though, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, Zoom, we've we've had some amazing guests over Zoom. Uh, it's uh, I I wonder how because a lot of my work at Absolute was kind of going to unlovable Soho hotels and interviewing um interviewing like there he is uh we just in bieber t-shirt <laughs> the black flag <laughs> style that was the that was the old studio when they, the, that was the old studio and when they um refitted it when they uh when they pulled everything out and, and replaced all of the kit with new kit um when the walls had a big cavity in them i wrote in big letters nufc um and then the builders like covered it over like pete was a yeah, nufc uh, and the builders covered it over so somewhere in the walls of absolute radio there's a big nufc in in, nice. in sharpie in the walls it's like when that um southampton uh the southampton builders um didn't they put like a a, a pompey shirt or something in yeah. uh, in the walls at southampton i seem to recall <laughs> or, or the other way around it was uh, it was all very childish <laughs> um absolute You've done literally everything, pretty much. You helped on a, a variety of shows. Um, what do you miss most about working for the company? And do you do you wish it? You, do you wish you could have stayed there longer, or is it just the fact that the podcast was just doing so well? You had to just make a decision one way or another. Um, 
I mean, to be honest, I think <clears throat> I think if if you're in radio and um, I think I think a lot of people have careers in radio, and 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 I certainly had one like that up until a certain point where you are always striving for a better slot always striving to get that better slot always striving for different hours always striving for a better deal um there's not a lot of money in radio anymore like there used to be you know big deals unless you're on breakfast or drive time you it, it's quite hard to make it a career if, you, if you're not doing um five days a week I, I was in a situation where i'd done every show i wanted to do i didn't want to get involved in breakfast i wasn't good enough for breakfast i wasn't good enough for drive time to be honest there's, there's elbow lovely <laughs> lovely lads, oh, lovely don't lads. T- when we were doing prep last night i said to i said to johnny i said i will give you a grand if you can name the two fellas either side of you because i know because i've seen elbow live about five times but johnny ah, wouldn't have right. a clue oh. you've just given it away sorry sorry yeah Guy guy with someone else. I can't remember the guy's name. Is it Simon or uh, Pete Turner? Pete Turner. There we go. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking fan. And again, lovely lads. And, and, and I guess with all the interviews and stuff, like it's weird. Like you'd interview someone and you wouldn't necessarily like their music. Um, and then you interviewed them and then you'd kind of get into their music a little bit because they're so nice. And you're like, oh, I really like them. I really got on with them. I, re- I like Pete Wentz from Fallout Boy. I've always loved Fallout Boy. <laughs> 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 so weird. Good, good uh, football player. We had a bit of a kick around at Isla White once, and uh, yeah, good, good little football player. Because he's American, I guess. Kids, kids, uh, certain kids get to play a little bit out there, don't they? Have you ever had like a moment where you were interviewing like a hero of yours? Have you had the opportunity to, to like really kind of go, oh shit, I've got to be on my A game here because I don't want to mess this up, and I hope to God they liked me. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think I've done, I mean I've done Steve Coogan a couple of times, and like obviously he oh. talked to me when I was when I was like growing up, uh, like me and my dad used to watch a lot of that stuff, and um, yeah, I think <clears throat> I've done I've done some some ones where you sort of go, oh, wow, I've really got to I've I've really got to be be uh, be tip top. But then like I, I interviewed um, uh, God, what's his name? Oh, the Smashing Pumpkins. Um, uh, oh, Billy know? Corgan. Billy Corgan, interviewed him a few times, and uh, <laughs> even though like a big fan of his fan of their music, and I, and I, we'll always get we always got on when we when, when I interviewed him, and because uh, <clears throat> we used to talk about wrestling quite a lot, he's a big wrestling fan, and uh, he and at one point it, it was the day that like um, Kurt Cobain had released. Uh, Kurt Cobain had released. Uh, someone had released these tapes that they'd found from Kurt Cobain, where he's doing like his own, not radio show, but he's like um, kind of cutting up like bits of tape and recording bits of tape and making like these kind of audio kind of mishmash soundscapes. And um, <clears throat> and, and Billy Cog was going, oh, how, like talking to me and my my, my um my co co host um, Sarah, uh, it was sort of saying, oh um. I used to, when I was a kid, I used to um, sort of chop up bits of like radio and stuff and make these soundscapes. I went, oh, they just found uh, Kekabin, uh, Kekabin stuff uh, doing that. Like, they just found it today. Um, and he just went, mm hmm, yep. And then just started talking to my course because he was, because I forgot <laughs> or didn't know that they didn't like each other or he didn't like him and he didn't like the way that he's been canonized. And, oh, dear. But never uh, get over yourself, Billy. I mean, at least you didn't tell Keith Gillespie that he played in an FA Cup final when he really didn't. <laughs> really? <laughs> the one person who would know. Why didn't he? Why didn't he play in the cup finals? He was he was injured, um, uh... and was replaced on the right wing by Warren Barton, who I'd interviewed the week before. And as right. soon as I said, as soon as I said, I I knew he didn't play in the FA Cup final, but we were getting along so well. For some reason, them words just slipped out my mouth, and then he said it was the lowest point of his career. So I was like, oh, cheers. <laughs> oh no, I, that's I, all right. I think it was the lowest in Sam's career at that point as well. But uh, <laughs> he's recovered quite well. He's recovered quite well. <laughs> uh, the football ramble podcast, Pete. Um, where did it originate from? Because it just it's just accelerated so much over the last you know ten, nearly fifteen years, hasn't it? Um, uh, so, sorry, where, where did it start? Sorry, my uh, my head yeah. was terrible. Yeah, it's Um, yeah, it just started in in uh, in uh, Luke and Marcus's kitchen. Did a few shows there. Uh, they managed to find a little bit of studio space in um at some kind of like BBC Kent studio or something, BBC, BBC Essex or something, or Home Counties, um, that, uh, and then moved to where I was at uh, XFM down in the old Choice FM Capital Extra Studios, um, then went back to my kitchen, <laughs> then went back to my bedroom in, in uh, Highgate, and then um, we're now in in Highbury. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those shows that um, 
we never really plateaued. We always added added listeners. Always, always kind of widen out, and and you can sort of see from the kind of live shows that that's kind of like a visceral kind of exp- um, uh, sort of demonstration about how how popular the show is um, compared to like five years ago when we started doing live shows six years ago. Um, it's just been getting more and more and more popular. And you know, we've done shows in Oslo, Norway. We've done shows in like uh, Chicago, New York, and and uh, places like that and uh yeah it's just gone from strength to strength really um i, th- I think we've we've been going a very very long time um <laughs> but luckily there's always something to bloody talk about in there and we've not fallen out yet so and and and, and this season we uh added some uh, really really capable uh, and fun more importantly uh broadcasters to to the to the pylon so uh now it, it makes it um it re- it's really freshened it up really made, made it sound um, so much more different and, and so much more fun rather than us just recycling the same old touchstones here and there <laughs> yeah. even though people seem to enjoy the touchstones quite a lot I mean you, you say you've not fallen out yet but with Newcastle United being as, as they are over the, the past decade and, and more now mm. you obviously you'll have to you you must come in for a bit of flack because we're so rubbish at the moment and with our <laughs> wonderful, wonderful owner and our manager who's fortunately found his dog courtesy of Twitter. Um, <laughs> are there some days where you just think when Newcastle hit the news and you're just like, oh, I cannot be bothered? No, man, that's when I shine. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think the true Jordy got his following for crying out loud? Just getting angry about stuff. No, um, I think with... Um... I think with with, New, with Newcastle, uh, the thing that annoys me about my co-hosts is uh, specifically the, the 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 OGs, the original four, Marcus, Jim, and and, and Luke. Um, they do have a tendency to do that kind of talk sporty kind of sky sky sportsy kind of Rio Ferdinand. Um, I'm a friend of Mike Ashley. Newcastle are doing all right, really. La 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 la. Um, and so I have to, and they and they know they're being silly. They know they're just trying to annoy me. Uh, and they always get a rise out of me. And so it's quite cathartic, really. It's quite, you know, you can get get a little angry uh, about the things they're saying about Brucey doing an all right job when he isn't. Um, <laughs> so, and you just go from there, really. I, I get a kick out of slagging off Newcastle. It's, 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 they, they are, I think I would not like football as much if I didn't support Newcastle because there's always some mad shit going on. It's never quiet. It's brilliant. It's terrible and brilliant. <laughs> I'm sure you agree. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You, obviously, you're living in London or just maybe just on the outskirts, and I don't know exactly, but it, it seems like whenever somebody talks about football and talks about Newcastle and they're from London, they just don't get it. Do you yeah. have to try to explain what it's all about in the North East? I think um, I, I think having never lived in, in Newcastle and, and only visiting kind of infrequently, in, in I got a few sort of Johnny mates who we got the football with, um, and yeah, I, I, as an outsider, I I can't speak for what it's like to be a Newcastle resident, Newcastle supporter. Um, you know, I'm, I'm if the trains were better. Um, Hartlepool would seem a little closer to Newcastle, but they're just not. Like that trip, that trip should take twenty minutes, but it doesn't. Um, but uh, those little kind of hot uh, bus trains. Um, but yeah, I, 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 if I, I actually find um, Charlie, who's, who's our producer, he is a Newcastle fan, but he's like from the south. Uh, he his kind of like heyday was like you know Craig Bellamy kind of era at Newcastle. You know, so he doesn't really remember the entertainers, um, and 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 he's way more informed and way more sort of even-minded than um, people who obviously don't support Newcastle United at all and don't, underst- don't understand what a, what a crazy shit tip it is. Um, but yeah, I, I get I get sort of frustrated. And I think most Newcastle fans get frustrated um, uh, that, uh, you know, um, the, the way that Newcastle fans are portrayed in, in the press is just endlessly annoying that they're just ungrateful and they should be happy with with what they've got and and they and and the, the 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 few times that Newcastle are on the telly on a Friday night um people suddenly start going oh yeah yeah new, yeah Steve Bruce is awful isn't he <laughs> it's really annoying yeah. that, that they only get they only sort of come come round uh, when they actually watch Newcastle play because it is frequently difficult to watch this season and last season so yeah <laughs> so it's no, that, I imagine it is frustrating and, and way more that, frustrating for that, you guys because you are part of you know this is your sole kind of thing like you you're, you're, you're just talking about Newcastle United pretty much and and it's <laughs> it's upsetting <laughs> I'm sure 
<laughs> yeah, it's um, it can be tricky at times, can't it? But that's that's the thing. I remember one of our lads, Adam, said, uh, and it sticks with me. I've, I've quoted it a lot on the channel that you don't realise how bad Steve Bruce is until you until he manages your club, because yes, my yeah, my other yeah, half, yeah. my other half's Villa. And then right. when he was at Villa, I was like, oh, he's all right. He'll get you up. He's a solid pair of hands, isn't he? Bruce is fine. And then we have him and, oh, my God, some of the football we've had to sit through is just, <laughs> wow. You, you, you sort a... of, he's such a limited manager, and you, but you sort of look at the results um, against Leicester and you sort of go, look, you, you are terrible at being a normal manager so just do a key just go gung-ho throw everything at it get your linton off just, just, just get, <laughs> go gung-ho just just bloody go for it um and 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 let Dubravka just you know soak up everything at the back because he's 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 one of the best goalkeepers in europe so just should just do that be more swashbuckling because you you clearly have no other setting. You can't be a defensive manager. You you've proved that you are you 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 play play players out of position all of the time. It's 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 just I, I don't know how he managed to kind of like get the job, retain the job, and he'll probably have it next season. You know, he's just come yeah. out this morning and said that he intends to be manager next season. Obviously, there's an arbitration case. Um, I mean, I intend to be a millionaire, but th I mean, we can all intend. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody yeah. does, don't they? But um, yeah, I was just going to say, Pete, where, is, where, where are the first memories of supporting Newcastle? Why Newcastle? Um, I think uh, I was at the time. I I sort of joined football very very late. I like I, I, my first kind of uh, my first World Cup was World Cup '94. I was I wasn't interested in football before then. Um, I mean, in fact, I actively disliked it. Um, so I like got into football very quickly. I was like, what what the heck? Like this island team are amazing. Like they're just you know it's like uh, Helton's just lobbed Paliuka from almost the halfway line. It seemed like it felt like. Um, and so like I really got into that Robbie Baggio and uh, Romario and, and you know th that that kind of generation of uh, footballers and. Um, and yeah, obviously, you know, Newcastle were like ridiculously uh, talented, and 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 it's kind of, um, it, it, I think it would be fair to say that it, it was the last time the North East seemed important. <laughs> I know it's, I know it's terrible. Like, I, I, you know, um, what's it? it was that uh, indie uh, singer um, from Newcastle, one of the Shields, um, uh, hypersonic missiles. Uh, oh, Sam Fender. Sam Fender's doing the heavy lifting at the moment, but Newcastle United back <laughs> then was very much the Sam Fender. And it just felt like, you know, like when, like, um, like the Manics and Catatonia and, and, and that idea of Welsh pride in, in the mid 90s, like, it just felt like, oh, Newcastle's got stuff going on. Like, the North East's got stuff going on. You got your Gateshead, you got your Sunderland, you got your, <laughs> you've not got your Hartlepool. But, like, but, but it, it felt, I, I felt a great um, sense of pride being um, from the North East and, and, and producing um, such wonderful, like, crazy football um, in the Premier League. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean, massive glory to Potter, obviously. Um, but I, I think I've atoned from that, for that uh, ever since, to be quite frank with my money and my sadness <laughs> and my tears. But, yeah, it, yeah, it all kicked off when uh, Keegan sent the turners. Um, I, they were just a team that you just could not ignore. Um, it, it's just, it, 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 I, I was a fan of, uh, I used to go and watch Hartlepool, but um, whenever I could, I would, I would be up to watch um, Newcastle play. My first match was 1-0 uh, win against Villa. Um, uh, Les Fernand header, um, beat Beersley, um, swinging it in from, from the right. And I think th that match was really sort of um, stuck in the, stuck in the old noggin because um, I'd never seen that amount of people before. Like, you know, when you sort of see, like, for, what would it be, 42, 42,000 people um, in a place, and you're like, this is ridiculous. I have to do this more and more. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's been Newcastle ever since, really. Yeah, that team was just so inspiring. That's why I, I mean, I'm in the Midlands, 200-odd miles away, but that team, when, when you're kind of six years old, geography doesn't really come into it, and that, that, no. that, that's the team for me. I want to see... Peter Beardsley. I mean, Lionel Messi must have posters of Peter Beardsley on his wall somewhere <laughs> in Barcelona because the re it's yeah. uncanny the resemblance. But just if only we had sort of half of that team now with like Philip Albert and like attacking intent all over the pitch. It's just completely chalk mm. and cheese now, isn't it? We. I mean, we have got like. I mean, we have got. Uh, like a lot of Scott Sellers, I would say. We've got a lot of Scott Sellers on board <laughs> as well. We've got like a lot of players that are like, 
But look, we've got some Paul Kitson. Paul Kitson is the is the uh, yeah. old school Joe Linton. Like it's it's like capable, but he's not going to win your matches. You know, it's. It, I think we've got a lot of players that that, that were on the like the um the fringes, the Papa Vissalus, etc. But um these are like uh you know we we, we could do with a few more. Uh, Ginlers and Aspreyas and stuff. Man, Aspreya, what a player! <laughs> I'll sit and watch yeah. uh, com- compilations of, of of those teams. Um, you know, pretty pretty constantly. NUFC threat level on Twitter. He always puts out uh, he always puts out old footage from like back in the day and sort of like goes in this day and you know. Um, 1995 and stuff, and it's lovely to see those matches that you've kind of forgotten about. You forget, mm. like, you know, some of Pit um, uh best goals, for example. It just feels like reminiscent about the good old days, but I, I, I just, it, it just almost gives me like a warm feeling in your stomach when I see like all the clips because it shows that we were actually good back in the day, or we were good a couple of years ago when we were beating teams like Chelsea, for example. Like just little things like that, it just makes you feel proud again. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, and you, and you sort of forget like. Yeah, I think in the ch- like I think P- Pardew, uh, who you know I couldn't stand either, but he uh, he made a very good point. Newcastle at, at their position uh, in 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 the pecking order in the Premier League, they have to sign scoundrels, and we we didn't have to sign scoundrels back then, but they, but since like two thousand to to now, um, there's been a good churn of like proper scoundrels, and you kind of forget who played for Newcastle, like. Um, I think it was uh, Gooch, Gooch's birthday uh, uh, yesterday or today uh, on NUFC.com. And I forgot, like, I really liked like, the Gooch. I really thought he was a very, very good footballer. He ended up, he ended up at AC Milan, but he just couldn't, he yeah. just couldn't get rid of the, rid of, rid of the uh, injuries. But, like, they're these players that you kind of forgot about, f- f- like Pankrat and, and all these kind of, like, forgotten people who, who, who did one good thing. And it kind of like cemented their position in in your mind a little bit, and then they just and then they just went like Kennedy, Kennedy from a couple of seasons ago. He was unplayable at times, and then he got his he got a longer contract, and then he just didn't do anything. He's he's I, th- I can't remember where he is now, but I I he was a real kind of missed opportunity, lost lost talent for me. Um, all of these like scoundrel kind of like like uh, uh, players who just sort of like float around the European leagues, and then they end up in Newcastle. Um, you know, a, a, on 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 a cheap deal or a, <laughs> frequently like pay a player kind of deal, and um, they they'll do one good thing and it'll stick in your head, and uh, and then um, yeah, and and they're 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 sort of position in in Jordy Newcastle for folklore is uh, is held, but um, I, I I do frequently think these players leave Newcastle. You look at someone like Olivia Bernard, who um, was constantly angling for, 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 to leave, constantly angling for a deal away. Um, and then he realised how good he had it at Newcastle and, 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 and came back. I think he still lives in the area. I think he coaches football up yeah. there, doesn't he? Glad um, him on the show. These players, yeah, th- these players forget that playing for Newcastle is actually quite a laugh. <laughs> so yeah. I would recommend any footballer to come and play for Newcastle because it's silly. You lo- There'll always be something to do. <laughs> I think as well with us, as a fan base, we always like that player, as you say, a scoundrel, but we always like someone who's completely batshit crazy as well. Like oh, your yeah, spree is Ket Spire. And at the moment, we've got Alan St. Maximum. What do you make of him? <laughs> he's very good value on Twitter, isn't he? Uh, he's getting upset a couple of days ago about Pete, about uh, commentators being unable to uh, to pronounce his name and, and the Willy... He's constantly... Uh, he's obsessed with the Willy Copter. <laughs> he's <laughs> 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 so funny and it, it's but it is that kind of thing it's like I, I hope I love watching him and 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 there must be so many uh, clubs sort of circling to see him because he is that guy is money he's great to watch he's the uh, ultimate kind of YouTube footballer that, 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 that will sell shirts that will sell whatever whatever you throw at him and you get the feeling that at Newcastle he's probably not getting paid what what he would elsewhere so I hope we all hold on to him because we need those bright bright sparks in dark seasons. We need someone to like hang your hang your hat on a little bit and sort of go, oh, this guy might get us something. This guy's good to watch. This guy looks like he's having like he's playing with a smile on his face. So, yeah, I, I hope we can hold on to him. But he's 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 such a such a fun character. Oh, he, he definitely is, and hopefully we do keep a hold of him because we desperately need to. Um, yeah. Just taking it back onto the onto the podcast there, Pete. Mm. Um, it, it just seems very fun. It, it just seems like you're all trying to take the nick out of each other, a lot of banter flowing. And it seems like you're enjoying what you're doing. It just seems like a group of mates who just seem to enjoy talking about football, regardless if it's Newcastle, Man City, Rochdale, whoever. 
you're going to talk about it and you're going to have a laugh about it. Is, is that the general consensus of it? Yeah, definitely. I think we, we, we put together a running order the, the night before our, um, Charlie does these days, but he just he just writes down uh, the subjects and stuff. And there's always... Um, there's always something. There's me and me Shaka's laptop. Um, there's <laughs> always that, something yeah. that. There's always something silly to, uh, to 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 talk about. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what um, match we're, we're covering. And I like the like the tropes that kind of run and run and run. You know, like the the Sven, like the Marcus's obsession obsession with them, Sven Jorn Eriksson, um, Vish constantly getting bullied by Jules. It's 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 really it's and it, and and for someone like Jules and, and Kate. Um, and probably Andy Brassel, to be honest as well. Like the, the those guys have very sort of straight, normal jobs. You know what I mean? They're they're, they're either presenters or they and they can't sort of let their hair down massively because they're on television. Or you know, it, it, it's pace here. You need to read or you know, you need to sort of um, present present yourself in a certain way. Um, and it's just nice to, to 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 hear them sort of let their hair down a little bit. Uh, I'm constant. I love working with Brassel. He really he, he, trying to make Brassel laugh is. Uh, is if I manage to make Brassel laugh, it, it, it genuinely feeds me for the next three weeks. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're spot on about um because the first time I heard Kate Mason swear on the podcast, I was like, she can't say that. She's Sky Sports News. <laughs> I know, right? But it's it, it's good to see that different side of someone like and having these like ongoing running arguments. Um, mine and Johnny's is the right back situation at Newcastle. <laughs> Right, okay. Um, <laughs> now, we, we we agree in a sense that all of our right backs are absolutely useless. Yeah. But <laughs> we we had an ongoing thing where in a back four, my argument was that Emil Kraft was more solid at right back and Johnny thinks Javier Manquillo is. Where do you I mean... stand and who is right? Uh, who's, the, who's the best? Who is the more capable right back? At the minute. I mean, Emil... I think Emil Kraft's international team are going to be playing Spain uh, on the first <laughs> match of the Euros. And let me tell you, they are going to have a fucking wonderful time. They are going to absolutely destroy uh, that, that team. Uh, because I, 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 what is Emil Kraft these days? Oh, my God, what is he? I, I mean... Thanks, what? Pete. It's, 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 it's. I mean, it, I, I mean, it. We've got nothing really, have we? I, um, uh, I, I, we've got nothing in in that position at all, have we? But uh, yeah, I'd, I, I mean, I'd, I'd still have Jan Matt back to be honest. Stick him yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have anyone man get Warren Bar and have retirement? <laughs> yeah, get Warren back. Yeah. But if if you're Sweden's second choice right back, how rubbish must you be? I know, I know. I just and he gets his he gets his place there. <laughs> He gets his and they watch. They must watch Newcastle. They must watch him do that. Oh lordy, I feel sorry for him for being being put in this position. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> That's the run over the right back for the Bruno Mourinho show. I'm sure it'll, it'll uh, for another week. Continue next week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you talk about um, Kate Mason and Jules Breach and Andy Brassel. Like just really, really good pros of what they do, and obviously that. They've just brought, obviously, with more of Kate and Jules, obviously, the, the very well known Sky and BT. Um, why did you want to bring those type of people into the Football Ramble podcast? And is there, was there a particular reason why you wanted to not change it, but maybe update it rather? Yeah, I mean, I think, it, listen, it's hard to have chats about representation in football when we're not representing ourselves, when we're, we're, we're not helping in, in, in any way. And, and But that's, you know, by the by, in my opinion, fundamentally, we've been going for 12 years and fine, like we've been able to manage like two shows a week. If we need to be in a position where we can put five shows on a week because um, we, the, the, the ramble of a season ago, we were doing like... A Monday show and a Friday show that we record on Thursday with the OG Ramblers, the four. And then we had shows like uh, Jules and Andy. We had like book reviews, interviews at the matches, um, and at the weekend at a show with Marcus and and, and the um, and the excellent Jonathan Wilson. But um, the so we so we thought, well, why don't we just find a, a, do a new channel for the ones that isn't the ramble, and then try and make five rambles, you know, a sideways glance at football, and you know, and have a bit of fun every day. So people have got something fun to listen to rather than 
a serious um, interview about um, whatever you know uh, with a footballer or a, or a, or a, um, a chairman or something. Um, why don't we just make the main ramble channel five football rambles per week? Uh, where we all have a bit of a giggle and we all have a lot of fun and we uh, like that really, um, and so it, we it was impossible, just impossible for for us to do it. Um, so we we're in a situation where we 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 each do still do two two a week, um, and we've chucked in Kate and, and Jules and and, um, and Andy Brassel and uh, Vidushan Andraja. So it's uh, and and it's and it's been a real shot in the arm. It's been like brilliant it's been fun it's it, it in quite testing times through like covid and doing some of them a lot of the shows remotely it's been uh i don't think we would have been able to do it with the with the 4g ramblers i, I think we would have probably just shut the <laughs> shut the doors and and walked away from it to be honest so they, they, they these guys are, are, are so talented and so much fun and uh yeah i've, I've personally been having, having an absolute ball and now kind of COVID getting out of the way and starting off eventually, is there going to be more now kind of, are you going to get back out on like tour with them and, and in front of a crowd, an audience? <laughs> um, no plans as of yet, to be honest, but uh, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't discount it. I, I had a hell of a good time on uh, on tour. We were, we were um, the Newcastle show was a real highlight, actually. Um, I found in, in the bowels of, uh, I can't remember which theatre we were at, but in the bowels I found like, um, like a trap door into the, into the into the stage um i sort of clambered out clambered out of that at half time <laughs> even though the floor manager said uh, don't use that don't use the don't use that don't don't go don't go in that room i, was like, I went in that room and then i climbed out it was fun it was the day that uh, <laughs> southampton got absolutely destroyed as well so luke was in the back room laughing cackling away <laughs> and it was nice to see mum and dad to see us dick about even though they had no idea what the hell we were talking about <laughs> i think next time you play newcastle I think there's only one way you can kind of finish the show, and that is getting Nobby Solano over with his trumpet. Yes, please. What's he up to? He's, he's, he's Peru, is he Peru coach? I can't, one of the he's in Peru, he? yeah. He's, he's right, the assistant yeah. manager. We had him on uh, a month or so ago, and he Lovely. was. we had him on via this, this platform, and um, mm. he was sat in his mother's living room in Peru because it was oh, Mother's Day. Fantastic. Oh, you, I, again, like you forget... What a player, Nobby Solano! Oh, How many bloody yeah. goals he scored! Like from that position to score that many goals, incredible. I'm fairly sad he made more than Shola. <laughs> well, it's not too bad, is it? Um, but what's the biggest buzz about doing the live shows when you're on tour? What do you know when you get? Is it getting to the event and seeing the people arrive, or is it just being? Um, I don't know. Twenty minutes in, you just feel so comfortable. What is the biggest buzz, Pete? Um, it's usually after my second uh, Heineken uh, for some reason. <laughs> I've, 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 I've won before, <laughs> I've won on stage, and then I've won at half time. Uh, and by the end, I'm pretty blasted to be honest. But uh, no, um, it's uh, I think more than anything else, it's it's you know it's 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 doing a gag uh, off the top of your noggin and 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 it really connecting. You're like. Oh, get out. This is must be what like rock stars feel like. Um, and I'll get into the I'll get into the venue and like certainly when we did Shepherd's Bush Empire, um, the old kind of old sort of cinema style or two kind of uh, things with the, with the letters on. They would put tonight the football ramble, you know, Live Nation presents or whatever the football ramble. And I was like, wow, that's like that that strokes the old ego. Same in um, in New York and Chicago. We did a show in a in a synagogue as well. Never been in a synagogue before in my life. Um, so uh, so yeah, it got uh, it, it got me into into a temple <laughs> that I wouldn't usually be in. <laughs> I mean, did you with the past twelve months that we've had? Did you kind of have to pencil in a show possibly in Saudi Arabia, as is the fashion these days? If, if <laughs> yeah, you had the takeover <laughs> gone through. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's difficult times ahead. I think for any uh, Newcastle fan with a social conscience, but uh, uh, you you never know what's going to happen at, at Newcastle. To be honest, we won't be the first or, or last to uh, find ourselves in a bit of uh, a moral milieu, so to speak. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I I do fancy doing like a Qatar kind of uh, WWE kind of uh, crown jewels show where half the uh, Half the Jewish uh, contingent can't appear, <laughs> and the women can't yeah. wrestle. <laughs> so Kate and Jules would have to like dress head to toe. It's, oh dear, it's, uh, it would be interesting anyway. <laughs> I was just going to say that the wrestling podcast as well is is becoming increasingly popular. I think it's. I think. Do you know what it is? I think like a lot of people 
I will admit to saying that they've watched wrestling at some point in their life because it is so popular. Yeah. Obviously, you've got the WWE, which has been going for God knows how many years, and you've had like TNA, mm-hmm. and then um, I forget the newest the newest wrestling one. I know I've seen like with Chris hey, Jericho. Yeah. That's the one. Um, why is wrestling so important for you as well, Pete? Um, to be honest, I mean, like I, I started. We started Stakano about three years ago um, as a company to to basically produce the football ramble, but also to look at different things that we, we could do. And and so I started a podcast with a YouTuber that I enjoy, to run Japan, and uh, and my mate Mark, who we've wanted to sort of do stuff for quite a while. I used to work with him on the Alex and Breakfast Show on XFM, and he is uh, a just a just a one of the like one of the funniest men. He's a comedy writer. He's a writer. He's a He's a real sort of deep wrestling thinker, you know, and he's and he's and it, he's finally found uh, a vessel where he can kind of express his deep love and deep knowledge uh, about that sport uh, or sports entertainment. Anyway, and he and 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 sort of just it was just a really good excuse to hang out with him, to be quite frank. Because I really because <laughs> we, we 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 just didn't get to see each other. Now we get to see each other every 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 month or so. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I I I didn't know anything about wrestling when we we started, and now. I have just the most uh, profound respect uh, for anyone who uh, who gets into that game. I think it's a it's a frequently baffling and weird and uh, important sport. I think, um, and I I would probably you know I'd, I'd probably say I'd probably respect someone who got into wrestling and 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 was a jobbing wrestler, just you know going around the territories uh, in in like at any point in their career, and uh, I'd, I'd say that's braver than any any footballer has been when it comes to sort of traveling and, and stepping outside their comfort zone. It's, it's, it's incredible. It is. It's so unique because you wouldn't in football have a 60 year old superstar from the eighties come in just to mm. play a game. You, you like, <laughs> we, 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 we would, we would never welcome back Laurent Charve just, just for a one-off <laughs> game in the premier league. Would we? It's ridiculous, No, but it works. No, but yeah, and 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 that is the thing that I think uh, I, even I I don't know much about wrestling, and I, my I started watching wrestling uh, you know a couple of years ago, and so my sort my 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 sort of wrestling sort of pedigree or knowledge is is very very scant, and very 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 small, but. Um, I appreciate the pop when you know the Hardy Boys jump out at Royal Rumble, or um, you know, uh, like you know, when when um, any sort of old wrestler sort of appears. Uh, even though I don't remember them from my childhood, I remember them from two years ago when we did WrestleMania Seven or something like that. It's <laughs> it's it's incredible. I think they have a real. Um, I think wrestling fans have a real profound respect for their uh the the, the people that, that that put their bodies on the line for for their entertainment uh back in the day and um i think you can see see that it's a very unique um kind of adulation a very unique kind of adoration um that a wrestler experiences over like someone like a, a, another sports star i think the, the i think they're seen as 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 being um these hired guns that uh have their own complicated lives and and they they don't have and no one's got their back um it's a very uncaring thoughtless uh discipline uh and and, and, and the companies that, that that operate in that sphere are very unca- they, they don't provide much support to their to their charges um and so they are on their own and i think um wrestling fans really respect anyone who uh who, who chooses that lifestyle because it's 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 not for everyone <laughs> Yeah, well, I, like for myself, I was a big WWE fan when I was growing up, and mm. you you watch documentaries now, and you obviously they're away for pretty much I think two hundred and sixty five days of the year, or so like they only get yeah. about hundred days off a year, and that like when yeah. you look at it, for, that's like only a couple of days off a month. They, and that's, they that's do a like lot. They, 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 you know, you, you, I mean, apart from your Andres and your Hulk Hogan's, like you and even them they would be on it as well to be fair like they they you know you do your wrestlemania you're you're in front of a hundred thousand people in it in, in an arena uh winning the title or whatever and then you shoved in a minivan and sent to kansas to do a house show it's like the very next day the very next afternoon really so it's like the amount of like wrestlers who die in cars because they're just always on the road the amount of wrestlers that that live a very very strange life that that, that um that obviously shortens it uh, considerably uh, because most of them die in their 40s, sadly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a real shame. It's a real, real shame. Go on, Sam. It, no, I've, just, I've got it in my head now that I, I think the Premier League are missing a trick and we should allow one legend substitution per game. Oh, so yeah, like, definitely. If, 
if if like you know, I, I want to see John Beresford come on for the last ten minutes just to see a game out, something like that. <laughs> just what, just I like hear the crowd and the and the and the, the crowd can't know about which legend it's going to be. So some days <laughs> it might be Darren Peacock, other days <laughs> you might strike goal and it'll be Tino just coming out cartwheeling yeah. onto the pitch. Yeah, lovely. Uh, it's like Lionel Perez comes out. Oh no, we're already <laughs> there, like, mate. Yeah. <laughs> You just know if Lionel Perez did that, I think there would be a mass walkout of at St James's Park. <laughs> I do like the I, do, I would like the idea of like each each um, footballer having their own music though, like kind of yeah, the music hits and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think the closest thing to the the music is what Arsenal have been doing occasionally at half time or just at the right. at the end, like this, the beginning of the second half when the players come out. It seems to be an iconic wrestling. Theme tune, like I think they All had. Right. Um, I'm trying to think who they had recently. I'm, I'm sure they had like Kurt Angle's theme tune, oh, and nice. Triple H's oh. theme tune, just to like <laughs> I don't know, just otherwise there's always just no atmosphere. That motorhead the track, track. No fans. Yeah, it, well, it that, just that's, sounds that's amazing. The thing, that's the thing about Arsenal. They're just like they they they're just a nostalgia club now. They just they their whole kind of raison d'être is to remember the old times. Do you remember this kit? Do you remember the eighties when life was simpler? <laughs> It's just, it just, it, it is that kind of thing. They are a bit of a nostalgia kind of uh, um, uh, club, just designed to sell drip. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're not. Remember the entertainers. Huh? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah exactly, that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, like Arsenal, these teams like Man United now protesting against their owners. What mm. do you make of that? Because I mean, we've been doing that for years. Oh yeah, no, but when we do it, it's uh, we're, we're being ungrateful. I mean, well, you know, what else does what else do you want as Newcastle? You know, you're not going to be winning the Champions League every year, right? Yeah, would you? Like, yeah, fine. Yeah, no, exactly. It's it's it, it's it is stark the respect that uh, some in the football media have for Man United fans throwing a bottle of fucking dark fruits at a, a, a bus. Uh, the respect they have for that, but when Newcastle United get a few flags out, it's uh, disrespectful. Yeah, that that grinds my gears. <laughs> Um, yeah. Where do you want to see the Football Ramble podcast go to now, uh, Pete? Because obviously you've got the five shows now. Are you looking to say when we can kind of be a bit more normal um, to to go back to doing live shows? Obviously you've got a, a, a obviously a best selling book as well. Just to, uh, just to <laughs> add on to the list of many things you've done. I'm not done. sure about best selling, but it, all of the copies <laughs> sold. We didn't print many. Hey, I've we got, sold I've them got, all. That's all right. I've None got, needed I've to be bought. I've got my notes. <laughs> I've got in my notes, it was a, a best-selling book. So I'm well, going to go on. with it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The best part of like selling that book is that we did a tour off the back of it, and we would uh, and people would buy books at the at the show, and we'd sit and we'd sign them. Um, and we, you know, it was me, Marcus, Jim, and, and Luke, and we were all in, in a row. Um, but after a few beers, I just descended to me writing like a like Marcus is a bell end. Uh, and getting down, <laughs> getting down the end of the queue and Marcus going, Peter! And we were just sort of like squabbling and like trying to point score by like drawing Mark, trying, trying to draw the most awful picture of Jim or Marcus. Um, so it just, it just descended into absolute uh, lunacy. But yeah, I think um, I think I'd like to see us sort of expand a little bit into into America. Our American figures are good, um, but I think they, 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 could, they could be better. I think more people... Um, could know about the, the football ramble. The, the, the trouble with podcasts is like it's all very word of mouth. It's still very word of mouth. There's no one way of doing marketing. There's no one way of getting a, getting news about a podcast out there. So it's um, it's incumbent on us to sort of come up with new ways of, of, of getting the message out there and getting people to uh, to listen because we we do feel there is a, there is a, a huge um, market for, for for daft football podcast shows that don't take themselves too seriously um, and we, and I think a lot of the stuff over the pond and and pretty in, in every other territory to be honest a very kind of ESPN very serious very um, just you know facts figures and and, and, and you know a bit of uh, hyperbole but um, I think you know, the, the ramble back in the day was described as um, four men who, who who love the love the. It was either four men who love the game they hate or hate the game they love, um, and I think that's that that's always been uh, the motto for me. It's always been football is ridiculous and stupid and it shouldn't be taken seriously. Uh, and I think that I think uh, the more people hear the ramble infrequently, uh, sorry, frequently, um, the more people seem to like it. So <laughs> just need to get in more people's ears, I suppose. Don't know how to do it, but we'll, we'll figure it out somehow. 
Yeah, when you figure it out, figure it out. Let us know so we can do it too. <laughs> but that, 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 that's the thing with um, with football as well, and, and it ties in with what you just said there with Newcastle United because we love Newcastle United, but kind of sort of hate what it is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's fair. And 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 what and ha- I, I hate how sort of uh, how I hate how I watch Newcastle matches these days because. I'm so bitter about the way that um, people like Steve Bruce uh, are kind of represented in the media. He's got a lot of friends in the media. Um, Newcastle United fans are, are uh, characterised as being ungrateful and uh, they, they, they don't know what they've got, etc. Um, Steve Bruce is, is regarded as, as, as being... He's doing the right job. He's doing fine. He's doing... You know, he, he's exactly what Newcastle United need. And one, when it starts to get... When a couple of goals go in against Newcastle, there is a bit of me that goes... Put five past them. Put five past them because nothing changes without getting five, getting five put past the team. Nobody sits them and notices. Nobody, um, you know, that that, that that result against Brighton, that absolute no-show. Oh. Um, that, like, it, nothing happened. Like, and that wasn't like, it wasn't like loads of goals flying in necessarily, but I just thought it, that that deserved a higher scoreline because Newcastle came with nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's... And I think, and I think something that Mark always says in, in, in Wrestle Me, he says, um, you can hate a team, you can love a team, uh, you, you can love wrestling, or you can love a match or hate a match. But when you start not giving a shit about the match, that's the worst. And 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 sometimes when you castle, I'm like, I just don't, I don't know what I'm watching here. This is this this is this. You've not set up to 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 win a football match. Here. You've not set up to do anything. To be quite frank, you've not even set up to park the bus. You just. Ugh, just people dropping passes left, right, and centre. So, um, so yeah, I, I think apathy uh, is is the real kind of enemy of football. I think, and 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 it's death by a thousand cuts for Newcastle. Like, you know, the 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 the, the tra- you got pictures of people in fucking bins at the training ground and paddling pools. You got um, Saint Joseph's Park looking pretty pretty rough, to be quite frank, in in twenty twenty one. Um, and uh, you know, the, the 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 tacky Sports Direct kind of like, um. Uh, kind of like the tunnel, you know, like that light thing that they've got that looks makes it look like a like a go go bar in Phuket or something. It looks horrible, <laughs> um, and 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 it's like, and 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 these things aren't like big enough on their own, but they're just they just sort of needle away and they just pull away at the the stitches of of what makes Newcastle United special, and you know, and then Joe Linton comes on the field and. <laughs> just upsets me <laughs> so it is it's, it's apathy is is the main thing i i genuinely think i'd 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 prefer to watch uh, some of the performances last season i prefer watching newcastle in the championship nothing to fear in the championship a lot of football to be played uh it's a lot of fun i'd rather play i'd rather be um you know giving a good account of ourselves against teams like forest to be quite frank i i, I do not enjoy watching newcastle United in the premier league at the moment um although we got a result inexplicably against Leicester. I always start to feel with, with teams, if you come to St. Joseph's Park, if you play Newcastle United and you fancy playing some football at the moment, you will win the match. If you come and you start making mistakes, Newcastle United can sneak in and, and, and score a couple, which is what happened against Leicester in, in my opinion. But Leicester, like, Leicester just looked absolutely um, exhausted. I know they had a couple of injuries in the warm-up, but geez, it was a very, very strange match. I did not expect that. And then, of course, like magic, um, Steve Bruce turns up on TalkSpot the next day saying that you know the, the, they have unrealistic, the, the fans have unrealistic uh, uh, aspirations, etc. He's he, oh god, it's, he's he's. More canny than people sort of give him credit for, I think. People think he's just this doddering idiot. He's not. He's canny uh, and he's a shrewd operator and he knows how to play the media and, and he frequently wins, in my opinion, when he doesn't deserve to. Mm, I can't do another season in the Championship, though. I'm sorry. Just can't. <laughs> I can't. just can't do it. It'll be fun, though. It. It'll be fun. <laughs> Will it, though? Look what happened down the road. They're in League One for the... Fifth season or however long, I don't know. But I just Newcastle can't always do it. be there. But but like I, I want Mike actually doesn't seem he, he, he you know sometimes he, some weeks he wants to sell up, some weeks he doesn't want to sell up. I want to hurt him in the pocket. <laughs> I don't want to hurt him in the pocketbook. <laughs> I want it. I want him down in League One. Newcastle are always going to be there. Newcastle are always going to be there. Um, I, I guess as footballers you want to as, as football fans you want to see your team play against the best in the world. Um, but I mean this season. I don't think the Premier League's been the best in the world at all, so <laughs> I prefer no. the championship for my money. <laughs> um, Pete, last final couple of questions. Um, the first question is football-related. What's the best match or the best moment that you've seen supporting Newcastle? 
Uh, I was don't sad. say a game from the championship. <laughs> no, it was against Chelsea, uh, and it was when oh my God, where what where was I? Oh, I can't remember which um, stand I was in, but Pap- when Papi Cisse scored that worldie against Chelsea, um, I was sat in the home stand. With my um, with my with, with sitting on my hands, so I couldn't celebrate. But <laughs> seeing that goal go in was just absolutely insane. It was just madness. Like I, I he picked up the ball, it's sort of bouncing around a little bit. He just leathered it. It was like, what well, did he even leather? It? He sort of stroked it home, and it sort of <laughs> looped over over Petacek, wasn't it? I just, it was yeah, just yeah. astounding. Uh, goal. Like even Didier Drogba was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I and I was obviously in the um, I was in the home end, and like Chelsea fans, um, uh, Stamford Bridge is not a nice place to be um, at the best of times. But uh, yeah, it was uh, that was very difficult for me to. Uh, to pretend I wasn't a Newcastle fan at that point because it's very rare you get to see um, a goal like that scored scored live, I suppose. And finally, for yourself, Pete, just your general career, what do you want from your career now? Obviously, you've had such a successful career up to, up to this day. Um, I'll take what that. do you want? <laughs> what, what would you be happy with? Um, I think I, I think certainly with radio, I you know did everything I could possibly do. I just, to be honest, I just want to be happy. You know, I, I think um, I don't really have that much ambition anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I, want, I want me, uh, I want me and my partner and I want my family to be happy. Uh, and I think that's, it, I might sound like an old, old bloke, but maybe 10 or 40 is, is tell me that way. You just, you just want to be, you just want everyone to be healthy, everyone to be happy. Uh, because if you don't have that, it's, it's pretty bloody miserable. So I, I, I have no career aspirations i'd like to do more video game stuff I, I, I i'd like to play more video games that's what uh that's all i've got i'd like to play more video games maybe i'll start a twitch channel <laughs> sit in a bath in a bikini <laughs> and you'll get a few subscribers out of that i'm sure <laughs> pete it has been an absolute pleasure having you on for the last hour or so uh, talking all things radio football podcast it has been absolutely brilliant uh, thank you so much for coming on yeah, sorry, sorry. I was uh, a little bit. Uh, I'm not very good at explaining myself or telling stories at the best of times, but I am a little bit hungover. I went out for a few beers last night, so uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in fine fell. <laughs> so thank you for putting up with my weird stories. <laughs> Sam, where can people get this podcast? Oh, you know, Google it. I, iTunes, <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. You know, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere that does podcasts, it's there. Mm. And if you can't access it, use Spider VPN. <laughs> right, that's it. Yeah, that's that it. Up. we just need that. <laughs> saves, it, saves me saying it for the podcast intro every week. <laughs> <laughs> From myself, Sam Milner, and the Football Ramble podcast, what do you want to call yourself? Amazing presenter. Pete Donaldson. We'll see you all very, very soon.